Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the Stanford Prison Experiment. The Stanford Prison Experiment was conducted by Philip Zimbardo. He was born in 1933 in New York City to a family that had just migrated from Italy. Growing up, you know, in the middle of New York City, he was constantly mistaken for different races, like black, Jewish, Jamaican, you know, whatever. And this was what started Zimbardo down his path of psychology. He really wanted to understand, like, what was going through people's heads. So, that brings us to August 15th, 1971. He wanted to figure out why there was such a disconnect between um, prison guards and the prisoners and whether or not it was just prison guards were just being mean and power hungry or if it was just the environment itself that caused you know them to be so so aggressive towards the inmates and Zimbardo definitely took into effect that obviously not everybody can get along and that you're going to have people with different beliefs, but I mean, for the most part, you'd like to think people get along. The rules of this experiment were pretty simple. Uh, there's a group of middle class college students who would be subject to prison life. One group would be guards and the other would be prisoners. And they were just kind of thrown in there and said, you have full control of these prisoners, you know, run this prison, good. Uh, many people were skeptical about the experiment because there was no um, control group. It would be hard to look at it and say, okay, this is what we got for here, but this is what we got when we didn't. You know, do this, this, and this, right? I didn't like that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> After an extent, extensive application process, it came down to 11 prisoners and 10 guards, none of which I ever met before. The prisoners, they were given the works. They were picked up by the police department for committing various crimes. They were booked, stripped down, searched, given bedding and a prisoner ID number which would that would be what they were addressed as the entire time of the experiment the guards were given full khaki uniforms keys handcuffs billy clubs they even gave them shade so they wouldn't make eye contact with the prisoners so you'd think you know just a group bunch of group called college kids just some are guards, some are prisoners. It wouldn't, you wouldn't get that hostility, but within the first eight hour shift, guards were waking up the inmates, blowing their whistles, asking them to, to uh, do a count, which was, they'd have to recite their prison number back to them. And right off the bat, guards would scream at the inmates, just dehumanize them, and just make them think that they weren't anything special. For punishment, for talking out of line, or if you looked at a guard wrong, they were, they were up you, they were on you. They'd make you do push-ups as a form of physical punishment, and they would even stand on their backs and make them do push-ups that way. I don't see, because I definitely could not do a push-up with someone standing on my back. This was all on the very first day. And what Zimbardo hadn't realized, even realized yet is he too was being consumed by the experiment because he took the role of uh, the prison superintendent. And he'd, he'd stopped looking at the situation from a psycho psychological point of view, but from a uh, prison super superintendent point of view. Well, on the second day of the experiment, the inmates, second day, were like, nah. They staged a rebellion, they barricaded themselves in their rooms with their bedding, and, and this caused a lot, because even it caused tension, some tension between the guards, because they were mad. 
the guards coming in in the morning were mad at the night shift guards for being letting this happen, you know, letting being so lenient on the on the inmates that they felt like they had power to stage a rebellion. So they decided they were gonna take this by force. So they went in there with fire extinguishers, which is very cold to be sprayed by one. Took all took all of their belongings, took like the leaders, and put them into solitary confinement. Yeah, and after that, as you could assume, the the guards were way stricter, taking every pri privilege the inmates had. So now the inmates are completely dependent for everything they do on the guards, which gives the guards more power, and the inmates were got very submissive. 36 hours into this experiment, one inmate had already had a full-fledged breakdown, gone into massive fits of rage and crying. At this point, the psychologist decided it was probably him, his time to leave. One thing I have to to relay is that you could leave at any time. There, you weren't like actually in prison. You could, you know, peace out. So soon after the first prisoner left, there was a parental visits. Again, we're only on day three, <laughs> and the guards were worried that they were going to be. Once the parents saw the, the inmates, that they were going to take their sons out of the experiment because you know, how poorly they were treating them. So they treated them all real nice, gave, gave them a shower, nice food, played some music. but And so visit days went, went swell, but the next, soon after that, there was talk of like a prison break. The, so, again guards get all mean and brutal yeah. yes so soon after the prison the guards started being mean again we have another prisoner who is mental breakdown so they take his shackles off they send him across the yard into a normal bed, said, get some rest, get some food. All of the other prisoners saw this and started chanting, prisoner 819 eight, is a bad prisoner, over and over again. <laughs> and so this caused him to even go into more of a fit of sobbing. This is where Zimbardo stepped in and said, hey, you're not, you're not a prisoner, this is just a, an experiment. I'm a psychologist. And he's like, you can go. And this is this is when Zimbardo realized that this experiment had gone too far. And that was on day six of a two-week experiment. So it was supposed to, yeah, it was supposed to last two weeks, but it was shut down in six days due to the cruelty of the guards and the multiple emotional breakdowns. I think the main takeaways from this is how easily people conform to social roles that they're put into. You know, it's, it's very easy to forget your morals in a group situation. You know, when everyone else is being mean, it's really easy to also be mean and reciprocate that. And the same is said for the, for the inmates. You know, if everyone else is going to be submissive, you know, I might as well be too. After everyone went home, everyone was interviewed extensively, and they found out, like, almost all of the guards were in complete shock that they had acted in such a way, you know, it didn't even feel real to them. They were surprised that, that they could do that to, to somebody else. And the inmates were surprised at how cowardly and dehumanized they'd let themselves become. One upside to this mm, half-assed, half-failed experiment is that it led to the creation of moral guidelines and extensive background checks into experiments so they can be deemed morally right, so we don't have massive mistreating of, of people.
in conclusion, I think that, you know, we learn that people in a group will conform to the group's behavior, you know, and it's, what is pretty easy to get, to lose your sense of your morals and, and, you know, hit someone with a billy club until they do push-ups. Questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> Thank you very much for a great semester, Professor. Uh, it has been a wonderful time. Have a good day. <laughs>